Hi, this is the third in a series about brushes in Photoshop. There's a link to the last video in the description for this one in case you missed it. Once again, this particular video is about brushes in CS4 and before. I'll be showing you brushes in CS5, which have some differences once we've finished them here. Between the last lesson and this one, I took an extended break over the holidays, and I got two new Wacom styluses for Christmas, so I can talk about what happens with the scroll wheel and rotation. But before I do that, I need to show you something about the tablet and pens. In the last lesson, when I was showing you how the pen pressure affected the stroke, I wasn't getting as much difference as I should have been between the lightest pressure and the heaviest. That was because I needed to tweak the settings for the tablet. When I realized that while editing the film, I decided to go ahead and use the problem as a teaching point. So if you find yourself having the same problem, what you need to do is open the tablet settings. And because I'm on a Mac, that means that I go to my dock and click on System Preferences. And then I click on the Wacom Tablet button, and that opens up this panel, which lets me set the parameters for the pen that's in my hand, which in this case is the Art Pen. You can see all of your pens up here in Tools. So I need to change the tip feel, which is down here in the lower left. And I'm going to click on the Details button, and that's going to let me have this little try here place where I can actually see how the pen pressure is working. And oh, that's no good. Even low pressure gives me a great big mark. So I'm going to slide the slider right to make the sensitivity firmer. And um, now that's pretty good. Let's try one more. Oh no, I need to press too hard in order to get a thick stroke on that one. So I'm going to pull it back one notch and click OK. And then down here, I'm going to make sure that it's set the same, because it doesn't always do that. I don't know why not. And then just to make sure, I'm going to press and see if I can get to the full pressure here really easily. And I can. So this is good for my hand right now. So I'll close the settings and go back to Photoshop. I'm going to get the brush tool. And now when I paint, I can make a very thin stroke that becomes quite heavy. And that's what I wanted to do. Fine to heavy. So that's how this works. Now you might want to check this every day before you begin work, or at least if you're not getting the results you expect with the brush tools, because it can change from day to day depending on how you feel that day. So I'm going to undo these using Command Z to undo the first stroke and Option Command Z to undo the second. If you're on a PC, of course, that is Control Z and Alt Control Z. And then I'm going to open up the brushes panel, which I can do by clicking on the brushes icon, or if you don't have that available, you can go to Window, Brushes, or you can tap F5 on your keyboard and those will also open up the brushes panel here. So I'm going to turn off Shape Dynamics by clicking there, and then I'm going to turn on Scattering and open the panel at the same time by just clicking on the word Scattering. And that lets me see my Scattering panel. Now, as you can see, once again, we have sliders, we have menus, we have text fields, we have checkboxes, but these aren't exactly the same as the ones in Shape Dynamics. In Shape Dynamics, most of the sliders were jitters. These two top sliders are not jitters. Those are maximums. So if you don't have anything set there, if they're set to 0 and 1, you're not going to see any kind of scattering at all in your image. So just remember that. All right, let's take a look. Now, in order to actually show you how this is working, I'm going to start in the middle with count. And I'm going to increase the count to 4, which, of course, I could do by putting it in the text box. Um, let's turn that to off. I could do that by putting it in the text box, or I could just use the slider, which is what I did. That gives me four brush dabs at every interval. And of course, you set the intervals in brush tip shape down here in spacing. And I'm going to spread it out a little bit so that we can see more easily what it is that's going on here. Go back to scattering. Now, this gives you what looks like a heavier stroke. And in fact, you can get a heavier stroke this way, but I recommend that you do not do that. Because if you do, you can degrade your performance, and that means that you'll be drawing away, but you're picture will be drawing someplace down here and your mouse will be over here and you don't want to do that. That's really a difficult way to work. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to add some scattering. If you add scattering without the both axes checkbox checked, then what you will do is add scattering that is perpendicular to the stroke. So if I draw a stroke, I will get scattering that is perpendicular to the direction my stroke is going. As you can see, this is distributing on each dab perpendicular to the stroke, and you can see that I've got four dabs, and they're distributed randomly. So I'm going to undo this, and it's important that it's perpendicular because if you have shape dynamics going, let's just turn off these flips so that you can see more easily what's going on here. Then as you change the direction, the scattering remains perpendicular to the direction that you're going. And that's an important difference and something that you're really going to need to remember. So pay attention to that.
Let's turn off the shape dynamics, and we're going to undo that. If you have both axes enabled, then the distribution happens in a radial pattern around the brush stroke. So now, as you can see, I'm not only getting distribution of the scatter up and down, but I'm also getting it in intervals in the middle. So that's how that works. The larger your scatter, the more distance you get. So you can have very little distance, or you can have it really large. You can go all the way up to a thousand percent. And when you have a thousand percent, where the actual dabs land doesn't seem to have a whole lot to do with where your brush is. So that's something else you're going to have to remember. So let's take a look at some of the controls. I'm going to turn the scatter back down, and I'm going to turn off both axes so that we can see this more easily. The first one, of course, is fade. And what fade does is give you scattering for however many intervals you have in your text field here. So if this is five, and I'll get scattering for the first five intervals, and then it'll all just be a single brush stroke, like that. Pretty much the way you would expect fade to work. You can also have pen pressure. So the more pressure you use, the more scattering you get. And the less pressure you use, the less scattering. If you use pen tilt, then the more perpendicular your brush is, the more scattering you have. And the more parallel your brush is, if you lie it down on top of your tablet, you won't have scattering. So that's the direction that one goes. The stylus wheel, as you draw the stylus wheel back towards you, you will get more scattering, and as you push it forward, you will have less. I'm not going to actually pull the stylus wheel out and show you because we don't have a lot of time. Rotation. As you rotate your brush, you will have more or less scattering. Now this is a barrel rotation. It's like twirling it between your fingers. But you can easily control that too. So. That's the controls for that one. I'm going to turn this back off, and let's take a look at count jitter down here. Now the count jitter, as you might expect, jitters the count. And if it is set to zero, you'll just get four dabs at each interval, which is what we just did. The higher you make the count, the more jitter you get. If you set it up to 100%, then you will jitter between zero, which is a skip, no brush dab at all, and twice whatever number you have in the count. So right now, since we have four, we're going to jitter between no dabs and eight dabs. So as you can see, um, I don't think I skipped one on that one there. I skipped one there, and here I've got eight. But that's the way it works. Once again, there are controls. If you set it to fade, then what happens is that the count goes down to one after this many steps. So it fades from four to one in four intervals. So. So I start out here with a high number. You can tell I've got lots of dabs. And then as it goes down, I get down to 1. But since my count jitter is still at 100, that means that even at 1, I can wind up with gaps or I can wind up with double strokes like you see there. So that does not work exactly the way you might expect. And you need to be aware of how it's actually going to work. With pen pressure, once again, the more you push, the higher the count. And the less you push, the lower the count. With pen tilt, if you are perpendicular, you will have a high count. And if you are parallel, you will get a low count. In fact, you can easily go down to nothing, which uh, probably isn't what you want, but it might be. The stylus wheel, again, as you pull the stylus wheel back towards you, you have a larger count. And if you push it forward, then you have a smaller count. And rotation, once again, depends on how you're holding your pen in your fingers. And that's all there is to that. It's very simple, and it's very nice. And if you want random brush dabs or a jittery pen, then scattering is how you get them. And if you combine that with shape dynamics, you can get some really interesting stuff really quickly. Let's try that out. I'm going to tap X to swap my foreground and background color. And then I'm going to change the scatter to both axes and make it nice and big. And I'm going to have a nice big count here because I want this to pile up really quickly. And I'm going to leave it. Well, actually, I'm going to turn this down so I get a lot of count all of the time. Let's turn that up a little bit more. And then if I go to Shape Dynamics, let's turn on an X jitter, and um, we'll turn the angle jitter off, and we'll turn the size jitter off as well. And now, as you can tell, I can very easily build up what looks like a random field of grass. And that's how simple it is to get complex effects when you know what you're doing with your brushes. So next time we're going to look at texture, and until then, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.